Hello, Tony. Good morning. In fact, yeah. Hey, Bunny. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I am doing good. Thank you. Sure. Um, I need to actually drop at the half of the hour. Uh, I also know okay. that Feynman and me will not be able to join because that's not convenient time for them. Uh, yeah. They had yeah. some agenda for today that yeah. uh, I think they put in the meeting agenda. Yeah, yeah. Hackem the document. I'm trying to find it. Yeah, I I have it too. I have it. It's about the uh, it's about uh, how we are. Uh, I think uh, uh, kind of we want to set the code free status November twenty third because we are planning for the release on November twenty eighth. So he wanted me to go through. Uh, go through the discussion of discussion that we had uh the release mm -hmm. checking right because we had made some points in there as part of the discussion 205 so yes wanted to go over this um uh, uh, i think that's looks like the unblock unblock ratify is completed and done right uh, that we had a couple of issues and I think uh, we were able to get it done by yesterday. And Patrick said that is not going to delay the dates that we spoke about ratify itself. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. That is one thing. So that's pretty much done. And the notation go refactoring, I think uh, we have two PRs left for review. Most of them mm -hmm. were reviewed and merged as of yesterday. So today we have two of the PRs to be reviewed and I think uh, uh, I'll take care of that today and uh, probably give it to Pratesh and Rakesh so that we are uh, we are on top of that PRs as well. Uh, uh, which PR are you talking about, Vani? This is, uh, uh, this is uh, 200 and... Which library? Which repository? This is Notation Go. Notation is, Go. Notation Go is, I think that's already merged actually, 200. 200 is actually merged. It's merged. I think uh, this is not up to date. Okay. Anyway, um, it's already merged actually. Um, and the other one is 207, Pritesh. Uh, the other one is 207. Uh, 207, we are waiting for rebase from... Uh, we are waiting for rebase. And I already commented on that. Yeah, you have already commented like just this morning, I think, right? Uh, yep. Yes. Yeah. So there is not much that we need to do on that, right? So we have yes. to just wait on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's thing and notation CLI update uh, to notation go interface on track. This is nothing but I think once, uh, this is dependency, I think, right? Uh, to notation dependency go. Dependency on uh, notation go. Yeah, I think that's just the dependency. So we should be fine. Uh, we need to update the uh, notation CLI based on the dependencies after the refactoring of notation go actually. So that's fine. That's not a problem. And uh, the other one is notation using the OCI artifact manifest, manifest to store signatures. We are on track. And uh, I think uh, for that notation go was already done as of day before yesterday, I think with all the yeah. PRs getting merged and closed, but notation CLI itself is ongoing and I think should not take more than a day in that space. And uh, so, timeout, uh, timeout is something, uh, Pritesh, we wanted to see if we can move out of our SIVA. <clears throat> timeout, that we discussed about timeout, right? 
Uh, yes, what what about uh, are we going what's the default? Uh, if you move it out, you cannot have defaults later on. It's a breaking change. Uh, what what it doesn't have anything? Uh, I mean, yes, right now it continues forever. It will try to fetch every signature which is out there in repository. I, I think right now we have for max uh, signature, right? Yeah, this is an optional field. If by default notation wouldn't take anything like it, it would be a really large value. This would be, we want to discuss that. Even default values for everything in notation. Can can you can we start doing that uh, discussion on the notary v2 channel no. because Monday will be kind of too late, uh, right? Monday will be kind of too late. So, what uh, what do you think, Pratish? How do we go about we, this? We can start that, yeah. Yeah, if you can just uh, put in uh, your thoughts. I think I already added that in the same, but yeah, we can start a discussion. Yeah, I yeah. might not be able to follow up on that today, but yeah. Sorry, I so uh, I, would, I, yeah. I go ahead, go ahead. Please. I have a question. Uh, so why do we think that adding default values will be a breaking change? For example, right now we what don't will... have a timeout. In future, if we implement it's a breaking change, let's say I have thousand signatures. Right now it works with that. It takes even even if it takes 10 minutes to go through every signature, it works. If you had a timeout of like five seconds or 10 seconds in future, then suddenly my client starts failing. Is it yeah, because but, uh, of... like I'm not too sure. Yeah, it's a breaking change. Uh, that's yes. That's some health there you basically are precluding tying up the service for hours by doing this people so expect a timeout yep and right now we don't do it so if we introduce in future depending upon what value we choose it's a breaking change for any integration right yeah there's already a timeout so, okay. we're talking about shortening it right no, there is no timeout. No, right there now. is no timeout. Yeah, 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 but I, effectively, people will, will move away because nothing gets done. It'll never finish, right? So, yes, I I understand what you're saying, but we have to be very clear between change of behavior versus uh, protection of services. And I wouldn't necessarily treat this as a super massive change that we have to. And we haven't changed the behavior. We're changing how the system responds. So it's and and Pritesh, there is a there is also a limit on the number of signatures, so sorry, it will sorry. fail after fifty signatures. So uh, uh, as long as we kind of yes, the, and that, uh, I, that will be additional uh, additional kind of breaking point will be the timeout. If, for example, right now let's with ratify. If it fails open, I want, for example, I'm just giving an example. <laughs> Correct me if I'm, I might be wrong there. I think that if I will time out after three seconds, right? Or four, and five seconds. If I will time out uh, after three seconds. And if someone, in, in, right now, ratify as a native integration for a notary, notation, it's fine. But let's say if I use it as CLI, there, like I use it to call a CLI there. My my process will I have to some I have to explicitly go and kill that process after ratify times out, right? For example, if I if I use the shell out functionality so, of ratify, if I'm using the shell out functionality of ratify to call notation, if let's assume we don't have a native integration there, then ratify will shell out to notation. Notation will continue to run. Ratify will time out after five seconds or whatever x seconds. Notation will continue to run in background. Someone has to go and write some code to explicitly kill the notation process. Is that correct? So uh, we uh, like depending on how how we we think that. I don't think that you need to write code to kill the process. The process will be killed after like. Uh, it went through all the signatures. So it oh, went through limit. all the signatures. Yeah. So it will go through all the signatures. If the signatures are less than 50, when it goes through all the signatures and it doesn't find anything, then it will stop because it will say, I and, couldn't find a signature or you I might, validate. 
and you might end up starving all the resources if it's taking more than much time because you will have to spawn every pro a new process for everything. And if you have good amount of traffic there, you end up starving the resources on the box. No, why Why would you end up starving? For example, so you okay. will go... So each ratify will call, uh, I'm assuming it, it might be a hypothetical scenario. So like uh, each ratify will call notation, notation will run, ratify will return after five seconds, notation let's say run for 50 seconds. If you have enough traffic notation, there would be multiple instances of notation running for 50 seconds. 50 seconds, I think overall it is a seven second, right? Opa, get uh, you six. have to kill that. One, someone has to go and kill that process. The verification is going on. If you don't time out, someone has to kill that. I'm just talking about the shell out but, scenarios here. Mm -hmm. But this this does not, so this timeout does not apply for ratify. Ratify has native oh, yeah, integration. Yeah. I'm just giving, I'm just yeah. giving ratify an example. Right. Ratify, ratify is one of the example. If someone wants to do a CLI integration, because Ratify is doing native implement integration with notation, so it doesn't apply to Ratify. But if someone is doing shell out integration with notation, like someone is actually using calling command line from somewhere, in that case, it becomes problematic. But I like my point is that I don't think this is scenario in a high scale so uh, uh, environments. So this may be scenario when you have like build. Uh, and but then you actually you don't start like one thousand build, builds per second, right? That call notation. So uh, anyway, if I may propose, so I at least from 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 my point of view, I don't think that the the timeout the time timeout not the number of signatures timeout is blocking for RC one. So can we discuss that for RC two? So adding to what Tori is telling, uh, Pritesh, um, adding to what Tori is telling, looks like he and Shivesh team thinks that to add the timeout as a restricting the uh, restricting, of course, the process run itself, right? And uh, adding the configuration with the new flag for verifying is kind of needs more discussion and needs more deep time. So they are calling it is risky for RC1, but instead uh, what the proposal that they have given is uh, they like we can support it using the max signature attempts for RC1, but take it for RC2. Uh, if this I've, is the edge case, at least can we define a behavior? How will this works in RC one? Then we can implement to RC two. It's fine. I'm just worried about that. How both flag will work? At least define a behavior in RC one. For example, I have a timeout and I have a max signature. How they will work in conjunction? And if I don't, have, if I only specify one, how it will work? What will be desired behavior? At least define that, and then yes, we can move it to RC two. Okay. Maybe we can do a write up, Pratish, and then add it so that we can take it from there. At least we can yeah, start from sense. somewhere, right? Yep, that what makes we'll sense. try to okay. do is uh, we'll add both the parameters, whichever hits first, we'll time out uh, something uh, like that. Right? It like, depends. We can, we can debate on that, but yeah, yeah let's just let's yeah. do a write up. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do a okay. write up and then we'll take it from there. But at least we'll not block RC1 in that. Uh, we, we want this to be defined before RC1. If we want to change anything with the max signature, we should do it. So yeah, sure. write up. we should have a write-up, not implementation in RC1. I agree with that. Sure, sure. Um, the next one is uh, uh, the sign and verify tag to digest translation. Spec is still under the PR review for now as part of the debug options story itself, right? So implementation will be pending, which I think is tagged to post RC1. Any concerns? <laughs> no, I don't have any concerns. Okay, Pratesh? No. Yes. 
<laughs> with any plugin i might be for example let's say you write any plugin the plugin calls on remote repository it makes some calls how are we going to find that what failed with that plugin or any remote command failed like for example how will you get a d for example any customer tries to sign with let's say a plugin which makes a remote call but plugin call failed the plugin has mm -hmm. to emit some information for that remote call to debug how will you link that calls apart from obviously the account id or whatever we have but there might be a bunch of calls if you want to debug it how will it work or say example anything goes wrong and they want to provide us diagnostic logs or anything with that or i want to understand what went wrong if there was plugin failed what it failed or why it failed it might, this, is part a, of, this is part of having more data points if any failure happens that's the reason it is embedded as the debug option isn't it yes i want to debug that issue right right and for i think we agreed on sign and verify in rc1 not any other command but for sign and verify at least we should know do you think pratish this is a blocker for rc1 or it is i, mean, a, I cannot debug nice anything to... with that if i if i give it to customer customer and there is some issue i cannot debug anything on customer behalf i cannot just guide them unless they share the screen and they just reprove everything in front of me i cannot guide them at all Unless this, unless I deploy their setup, how will you guide them? What failed there? Okay, we can we can try see how much data point we can add here. Sure, sure. So uh, let me understand. Sure. Exactly. We are talking about the sign to tag translation, right? I think we're talking about down downgrading debug option, or it's just about sign to tag translation. Yeah, I, I got confused. I just want to clarify. So is it this about sign to tag translation and are we this okay is, the implementation? This is sign to tag translation. Yeah, story number in oh, my bad, 61. Then. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, okay. okay. Uh, and do we all agree that implementation will be post RC? I don't think we are ready to include that in RC1. Yeah. Don't we already have an implementation for tag to digest translation i saw that in the code i think it is the ux part right uh, pratish we are talking about it's the improving the doc and the output of the verification and also for a uh, uh, i think it's also the output of a successful signing it's the ux experience part of it which means I, what what is, information we will emit when sign succeeds and what information we will emit when verify succeeds. Yeah, correct. I think that's the one that is has to be improved. I mean, if we support sign to tag, we should at least emit basic information that what digest we signed. Yeah, and I think I uh, I comment on some of these proposals uh, how mm. uh, the messaging should be done. Yeah, and I think messaging shouldn't take much time to implement. I'm questioning why we're postponing. If it's just about emitting a normal message, I can do it in a day or two. I mean, this is not something we should postpone if it can be done in short duration, unless there is some major thing we are saying that, okay, we will support two format of output. One is JSON format, one is normal format. I'm not sure. We haven't done it so far and didn't make the bar. So the question is, why would you slip it in now? Uh, no, but I'm just saying this like I agree with that. It's like at least emit a basic information about the signature. Is there anything else we want to do? I'm not sure here because it doesn't talk about anything else. So I was reading exactly. the issue. This is mm. the issue 61. Mm, Let correct. me share it here. Yeah, it's in the roadmap issue 61. So it just says emitting a good uh, good message when we sign with tag, a warning kind of something. And we are doing it right now. If we just need to change the wordings there, we can do it. Why does it why why does it say it's risky, Toddy? Do you have any insight on that? 
Yeah, I, I'm looking at the other items uh, uh, that are linked to the story. And I think uh, there is a whole discussion, how do we actually improve the outputs from the commands? Correct. And because Correct. right now we are inputting, outputting very often just a, a digest or something like this, which is not very friendly approach. Yeah. Uh, I think we need to uh, rethink uh, completely how do we output uh, uh, information from all the commands. So uh, that's, I think, the reason that we said, so let's create a actually full plan how the commands will reply on the command line uh, and not just send the SHA. Like, for example, now you go and say notation, notation sign and you get some diet but is that the digest of the image that you signed? Is that the digest of the signature? It's not very clear what the command actually outputs. Mm -hmm. And it will take a little bit more time to uh, define those things, uh, I think. So yes. that's my last recollection. So basically... I, I... Go ahead, go ahead. I agree there, but I think the problem with tag is tags are mutable. And if we don't emit a good information there for a customer, for example, they start they try to sign an image with a tag, uh, basically with tagged image, we are signing a digest and we should emit them back. Okay, this is what we signed. Similarly, for verify, when they verify an image with a tag, we should emit the digest or at least image digest what we verified. Because if we don't do I... that, then the security guarantees uh, will lower the security guarantee for any integrating system. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So I, I totally agree with proper messaging back what we are emitting. So we are uh, clear on that. I am, and I remember actually commenting on one of the issues uh, uh, with uh, similar comments, uh, Pritesh. I'm just trying to see it doesn't seem that this issue is linked to the ish to the user story 61 that uh, uh, Vani sent. Um, I'm just trying to find it, but uh, having in mind that how we're so, how do you want to tackle this issue 61 specifically? I see that two out of five things seems to be done. Yeah. I mean, if you're supporting tag, we need to at least provide some information of what tag resolved to back to user. And that would be, I would say, set a minimum bar there that if we support tag, at least provide the information on what we signed, actual digest, and what we actually verified. If we can agree on that, then I think everything else we can postpone. Like we can work on improving the UX better in future, but at least this information should be surfaced. The output itself, right? Yes. I do you so uh, uh, Pritesh, do you have a link to an issue where we want to actually define what that output is because i am struggling right now to find that. Uh, we issue don't that. have it. We don't have it. It, it was yeah. It was three or four, which should contain, but uh, no. I actually, uh, is that in, uh, where is it actually? In notary, in notation or in notary goal? Notation, notation. Well, And you said three uh, or four? I think it should be part of three or four, right, uh, Pratish? Uh, looking I at uh, You have already made that statement, Pratish. You have told on October 13th, we also need to make output script friendly. Yes, we drew that. I think that was discussed a part of a notary meeting, but yes. I think you have put in like four comments, four tasks, actually. But uh, I don't think it is being worked. I, I am fine not being script friendly if we want to push it to RC, uh, post, post to RC one, but at least I want his basic information back to user. It's like what we actually signed mm -hmm. or what we actually verified. Like we can beautify the output later in this stage, post to RC one, but at least provide minimal information to the user, which is useful for them. Okay. Do I do, do you want to take so, a step? Okay, do you, 
Pritesh, I'm okay if we have a, the, if we just fix the output as part of 304 and add it to RC1. Uh, oh, that means open I, 304, okay. 304 though seems to be kind of much broader much issue. Broader. So there is a, yeah, debug discussed there yeah. and uh, documentation discussed there. So it seems that actually encompasses too many things too many I things. would suggest let's create a, a, a very small issue, very targeted issue for this output, and let's solve that for RC1. And uh, maybe we need to revisit 304 and see whether actually it makes sense to keep it as such a big issue that everything is discussed or break it down on small ones and just close 304. Sounds good, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, uh, I need to sorry. drop off in three minutes, uh, uh, Vani, and I, I can let you discuss the rest with uh, Pritesh. But one important thing uh, I, I wanted to discuss is we really don't have the plan for RC2. And uh, uh, our release for RC1 is, uh, sorry, 28, right? 28, and I think uh, the plan is to code freeze on 23rd. Yeah, so uh, if we can uh, maybe offline kind of at least set some target date for RC2 and high level, uh, high level kind of what are the, the goals for RC2 sure. and features that we think we need there. If we can do that on Slack, that will be great. And I'm available for the rest of the day actually to chat on Slack uh, sure, about uh, that. Sure. We can go through the RC to list of tasks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, uh, everyone. Uh, Thanks. Thank I need you. to drop off. Sure. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Hey, Pratish. Oh. Sorry, I have to go. Okay. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. Samhit, thank you. I'll yeah, touch base yeah, later let's, between let's, you and Pratish. Yeah, let's yeah, let's let's call offline, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah.